Hi, Ella. Thank you, as always, for uploading your homework. As a brief glance, you've done excellently. Really, beautifully. Let's uh, let's get into it. Okay. Um, this is your running picture, and you've done fine. Still sharper here. You are using a T7, was it? T7i. Okay, you have a nice, it's a good camera, a beginning camera. You have this lens of 50mm 1.4. Okay, which is sometimes difficult to work with, but in this time it looks like you've done well. Um, excellent, excellent. What you can do, I mean, obviously this picture, this area here isn't really giving us anything, um, but I, I nearly always, not ne I always shoot running pictures towards me um, using a horizontal like, landscape orientation. I find that feel that works better because the energy of running is towards you, and the the energy available in a landscape image is more like um, it, it provides better generally better perspective which is that kind of direction so you end up with like a dynamic kind of direction which adds more to it you don't get it so much here but anyway you've proven the point you've 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 show you're showing very well that you know how to use the ai servo function please make use of it it is an excellent picture to take on a shoot it's another very fresh exciting picture that you can always turn to and um it's i, I don't think i ever do a shoot where i don't use that function of the camera it allows a whole it's, it's excellent great um, I'll tell you just a, a, a point to remember is that it's great to, um, for if you have like a bunch of kids running towards you, then set your camera exactly with all the right, with the right, well, you're, you're not there yet. So I was say, oh, close you are, you're in class six. So you set your, set your camera to the correct speed, etc., cetera, uh, wide aperture and choose one person, choose one of the kids, the cutest kid, the, whatever it is, it's sometimes just random. But whatever it is, choose a kid and put your focus point on that kid and let everything else get blurry. Uh, you've, you can uh, go back to the class to see examples of that. But that's the key to creating one of those pictures is not thinking about having everybody in focus like we're generally thinking in portrait photography. Okay, this is a gorgeous picture. This really is a gorgeous picture. This is um, AWB, so I appreciate that your the AWB has worked fine here. You just it's very nice that you've you've you found such a lovely place to take a picture now this area here and this was immediately the first thing i saw i mean it's lovely and green um it would definitely be better if it wasn't there i think here okay um whether or not you could fix this i don't know if you could probably you couldn't but you've you found a beautiful place i just said what would make this place better would be more foliage coming around here which could be you could have worked out maybe i don't know uh, but over here i think this is excellent i love this uh this unobtrusive effect it's so out of focus that it's not really anyway that's discussing the graphics in the picture so uh back to the topic awb okay the white balance so i would i would have thought that awb in this situation again i don't know the time of day it says 7 57 a.m but i'm not sure if that was the actual time it could be um according to this time of year probably not i it could i really i don't know um the it should really be a little bluer according to how i understand things but it's fine this is now sun which isn't as good as um the awb the sun this is this is shade shade is for sure not going to be good and cloud this cloud actually did quite well the truth is you've you've gone too far out a little bit for us to see the skin tones let's see the skin tones here it could be let's compare cloud and awb i think i prefer awb so i another girl as well took pictures um and it didn't come out according to what i taught um what i would say is like this the default that we understood that I gave over that I that I run my business by and I've made you know I've I've have uh, many many hundreds of happy customers thousands maybe of happy customers uh, for sure uh, is the the rule when you're taking pictures by daytime is sun is your default and then if the pictures are too warm which happens regularly you go to AWB and it, sorry if they are too cool 
that happens regularly, then you go to cloud. And if they're too warm, that happens irregularly, then you go to AWB. But you can see here that really, so the point is that in this, um, in, in this demonstration, AWB looks good, cloudy is acceptable, sun is also acceptable there it's really and the, the shade really gives you that extra warmth um i mean this is a beautiful picture what really is special about this area the thing is the, the the white balance is really very um subjective because it really does depend on the color of the light at the time we're used to seeing all different kinds of things when people are like too blue and stuff that's a problem but here we have a warm image the light here is beautiful on this side of her face. If she just, this, this image in itself is beautiful and I'd like to maybe play with this in Lightroom. But if she was just looking off camera a little bit to the right side and then you'd have a little bit of light fall on this side of her face, which is called Rembrandt light, maybe a little, maybe a little further, it turns into what's called loop light. This is well beyond where we are right now. Um, but that would be a very beautiful light scheme on her face and she'll be looking off uh, she'll just be looking off of camera right just keep that in mind for when you have it not that you shouldn't have taken this picture 100 100 you should have and it's gorgeous but when you take this picture and you notice that there's light on one half of the face and not on the other it's doubly important to have your subject also just look off of camera to the side of the light okay we didn't even get to your photo shoot so i think we should keep moving um no need for raw yep excellent the the light on our subject is comparable to the light in the background we don't have any wacky um um t light uh, color temperature issues excellent perfect example and a perfect example of a picture that could be shot in raw should be shot in raw uh, is very difficult i don't like how the bridge is coming out of her head that should have that should be different um but just the actual we can just see that to get a decent picture here we need a a very diverse uh level as in we have very bright highlights and we have dark shadows in the as the subject so this is a perfect example of a picture that should be shot in raw nice one on that well seen i now appreciate that you understand how to use raw raw is the go-to um file kind for most photographers most professional photographers as you saw in the in the tutorial that i gave um but it's definitely if you can get away with shooting in jpeg and still provide excellent photography for your customers then the benefits of not having to deal with raw i think in my opinion are, are really good so uh you're doing great uh, but it is important to know that when you do it's, it's an important tool to have in your in your belt that when a picture needs to be shot in raw you shoot in raw and i do that i do that you know within uh for a, for a, in a wedding say i take if i take four thousand pictures i would imagine you know between uh five and 15 of them will be will be shot in raw something like that occasionally more okay um let's keep going so here we go this is your photo shoot um excellent i love this picture would i crop in a little closer i may be cropping a little closer but maybe not the one thing that could be improved is that we should have a slightly lighter background over here so that we could see his couple see that we could see the edge of his head the dark background is eaten in as like being swallowed up by the dark couple which means we can't really see the edge of his head that would improve the picture but lovely clean um stats are excellent perfect um uh great picture great shot now the the dreaded eyes in the corner of the sockets was it you that i spoke to about this no it was the last tutorial that i made um i really like laid in there um I don't know if I've ever seen a picture that looks better with the eyes being in the corner of the eye sockets like this, just like in this picture here. Really, you want him looking, Is for a kid, you can't really have them look too far because you only turn your head a certain way and then you move your eyes, but really you need the eyes to be in the center of, uh, the, center of the eye sockets, okay? That said, that would make a very big difference. It's difficult to take a picture like this too seriously because it just looks awkward and everybody feels that when they see this picture so let's just say his eyes weren't in the corner that's a very good everything else is let's just have a look at your stats perfect it's the same as the last picture perfect okay gorgeous photography you should be really proud of yourself you have come a huge distance 
a very, very long distance and you are taking really good quality professional photography. I, excellent. This is a great shot and it shows that it's not just a lucky picture. This is somebody who understands photography. And I, I know that you do understand it because you can see it. And it's, it's funny now, we feel part of a secret club. But you can't really talk to other people about it because no one really understands it like this. It's like, you know, when you meet real photographers, you could speak to them about this, but um, a lot of people don't understand. So you've got a great composition. We've got a lovely strong triangle over here. This line is actually adding, um, because we're going inwards, it's bringing us into our subjects. This line actually adds, okay? And because it's so soft out of focus, that also adds tremendously. We could brighten her face a teeny little bit. The, the next level, there's, but there's still a long way to go. Believe me, there's still a long way to go. But the next level is going to be paying more attention to how the light falls on the face and working out ways around that. Uh, but for where you are and for what you know, this is exceptionally good photography and you should be super proud of yourself. I love the the the, the reds and the greens, you know, fighting for the different emotions in the background. Great, lovely composition. The fact that her fold is, uh, shoulder is slanted down brings us into this side of the image. Excellent. Okay, this is not as strong as this. Um, it could be cut a little closer. Again, you have to, what you're going to have to start thinking about very soon is lighting on our subject. It seems like you've got everything else down. So now start thinking about the lighting on the face. Don't forget that you can't forget anything else as well. It's all, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger until like where, I'm, where I am now when I'm taking pictures is... I'm dealing with at least one assistant, sometimes two assistants, extra flashes this way and this way, all that regular variables plus flash. And like, well, it, by the end of a wedding, I come home and my brain is going so fast. It takes sometimes three or four hours for the mental activity like to drop down to regular levels that I can actually go to bed. It's quite amazing. Anyway, so you're, you're getting there. You're beginning with all the variables and you're doing great. Okay, this is nice. Um, we could fix this up very, we could add to this by having him put his arm around her back. Okay, that will pull her in close. And then if she put her arm around his shoulder, that would pull them in close. So instead of saying to kids, you know, get closer, get closer. If you could actually just say, put your arm on his shoulder, or you grab her arm, put it on his shoulder. And you just take the, his arm and stuff it behind her back. Then you lock them together. If you watch the posing class, you'll see that's how it works. So they, they could be closer together, basically. But... Stats are, again, perfect, perfect, excellent. Oh, that's a gorgeous picture. Okay, now I, I'm, I, I'm happy I uploaded six and you shouldn't have done that. But anyway, that is worth everything. What a great shot. Lovely. Okay, now why is it a lovely shot? Okay, so we're at, stats are fine. Um, I would probably be open wider because um, I, I would be open wider. Basically, with your camera, you have to know that a although it's worked out fine. But I'm not saying it would have been made the better much better. But I'm just telling you, what I would just to have the perfect stats. Is when I'm dealing with people walking to me, I'm usually far enough away, and the depth of field when you're dealing with a crop frame a crop frame camera is much longer than with a full frame camera, which means. My camera 1.8, it would be very unlikely that they'd all be in focus, but your camera at even 1.4 would still be very likely, and you could be using a, a quicker shutter speed. In short, I don't think it would have made this picture any better, but I'm just telling you like the ideal, the thinking, the thinking. Okay, uh, we've got a great relationship here. Remember, it's all about relationships. This, these gazes going backwards, forwards. Now he becomes, we have a very specific subject for the image, which is the little boy in the middle because we've got a nice light falling on his face that's lit him up. Uh, that really makes him more, more powerful than him. We've got a lovely kind of trapezium shape here and that trapezium is made out of all kinds of different triangles. I'll show you the basic structure here. If I get this correct, is it's really, it's really exciting. It sounds funny to say like this. But that is, for a human being, that is a very exciting shape, okay? That is a very interesting shape. So that really adds to everything. Um, excellent. Psh. Fabulous. So which picture should we take into post? I think it's funny because this is your, like, this is also beautiful. 
I, I think we're going to take this one. We're going to turn this one into a sepia picture. Let's do it quite quickly. Um, one second. Let's go to develop. Now, in regards to sepia, I've never set up a, a real sepia um, um, preset. I'm going to go to sepia tone here. Doesn't quite do it, does it? doesn't quite do it so now let's go and punch key with it where are we we're in probably in split tone before i do that i want to drop the clarity i definitely want to drop the clarity of this image that's already made a massive difference i want to crop in close this looks like a like a rembrandt painting <laughs> very special really special beautiful what a beautiful portrait may may i actually am enjoying the uh i am enjoying the sepia here i still think it should be a little bit more like yeah um like yellow ochre it's a little bit like burnt sienna right now so we'll drop the drop the um we want to give a little bit of a um of a vignette and now under split toning this is where all the we can change the hue so let's see if i can find what i was thinking mm, it's closer to that side drop this down now let's try it on this side No, I'm looking. I'm really looking for my a more yellowy. Can't seem to find it. Maybe that's what I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. I think that is what I was looking for. Let's see how different it was to what it was. Oh no! Oh, I can't go back to. Oh, actually, I suppose we could. One second, if we just go to sepia tone. Yeah, that was much better. Yeah, excellent. I, I, I'm not going to do much more than that. That's uh, something that I would hang on my wall. I, I think actually maybe I'd buy. I think the um, the vignette is a teeny bit dark. And I think maybe actually we could open up the shadows a teeny a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful excellent excellent work um you are right on right on target this is fantastic you've done well this is the last class no i oh, know you've got another class just also to let you know please i'm i'm spreading this around now amongst our little community that we've we've been overwhelmed with so many people joining up now that we're going to be changing the course very like quite dramatically and it's going to end up costing a lot lot more so that's going to happen in about a month's time so if you've got friends who you want to recommend the course to, then they should enroll basically um, immediately because within the next uh, within the next month the course could the course will cost a lot lot more than it's costing right now. So anyway, just thought I'd mention that to you. So if you want to pass that on to any of your friends, okay. Once again, amazing. Thank you so much, and I'm looking forward to seeing your next progression for next week. Okay, all the best.